Pull up a stool and pour yourself a pint as you're about to join three intrepid drinkers, Kevin, Justin, and Mark, as they embark on another beer-tastic voyage. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Beer-tastic Voyage. My name, it's Kevin. My name, it's Justin. Hello. That's Mark. Mark Mark doesn't like symmetry. Mark likes to bother me. (laughs) So today, we have another wonderful... User submission from Superfan Jack. User submission. <laughs> User submission. <laughs> Jesus Listen to submission. Sorry. Are we? Are we? <laughs> Sorry. It could have been worse. You could have said nocturnal emission. There could have been a lot of other things <laughs> that you could have said that rhymes with that. Uh, User, sub- yes. User submission. Jesus Sorry. Christ. Sorry. My apologies. Listener. Submission. Listener. Submission. And, and watcher. We'll yes. Plug our YouTube channel. Yes. You can watch this bullshit. On uh, on YouTube, if you'd like. All right. If you prefer to listen to the audio on YouTube, and you can watch us wave our hands and pass things across tables to each other. Yes. Yes, but I also find Im- images on the internet and overlay them over our voices. Yes. Oh, that's good. We you know we uh, occasionally uh, pilfer different things and show you visuals of of the crazy things we talk about, like you know such things as El Caban and uh, what's the other one? The Great Altuin. Yes, that one too. <laughs> and the beers we talk about. Yeah, you know, pictures, you know, pictures of the beers, like, relevant shit. Yeah. Um, so today we have beers from the Napa Valley of California called Mad Fritz. Yes. Is the brewing company. And I got to say, they come in fantastic flip-top bottles. You know, what are those, 750s? Um, I think so, with some delightful um, ink drawings on the front of them. Um, this one, first one that we're going to have is called The Lion and Other Beasts. It's made with Brett Brooks, and it is a... Is that the one I opened first? Yes, no, yes. I opened the wrong one first. Oh, that one is the Grisette Ale. Ah. So uh, their notes, the brewer notes, that the Belgian-style ale called the Grisette that is somewhat of a lost beer style, named for coal miners' wives that would serve this up after a long day of work in the mines. Typically a low alcohol ale at 4 to 5 percent ABV, with low bitterness and aromas of yeast spice as well as subtle hop notes. The base malt on our approach was a full pint two row from Madras, Oregon, water from St. Helena, Amarillo hops from the Yakima Valley, then aged in French oak for varying times. Our resulting beer is bright with light fruit tones, yeast spice, dry and clean. Clocks in at 5.7 percent um, alcohol by volume, and was aged in Chardonnay barrels for one month. Wow, there's a lot going on there uh, to start off with, and as we poured it out, it's got almost a Chardonnay kind of color to it. Yeah, it's definitely light straw color. Yeah, light straw, little bit of white foam head on the top. That is certainly persistent. It has a little bit of little bit of Belgian Belgian haze to it. I mentioned yep. in another episode that uh, yeah. when you pour a Belgian, it's just it has that like clarity yet haze to it. Yeah, I can see. I can see my finger through the other side, but I can't really see details through it. But you can definitely make out light through there, no problem. The, the aroma is awesome. Um, yeah. I get a little bit of a citrus mixed with the, um, the typical, typical Belgian character you get from Belgian yeast. But the uh, the Brett Brooks is interesting. I, obviously, I know what Britannomyces is, but what is the Brooks portion of this? Is that a, is that a sub um, species of Britannomyces? Yes, yeah, so there's a few different species of sub. Britannomyces is the genus, so like Berezius to Saccharomyces, and the species is Cerevisiae, where Britannomyces... Sorry. <laughs> Britannomyces, there's, a, there's two or three uh, main species that are used in brewing. Bruxellensis is one of them, and Bruxellensis gives you more like leather and like pipe tobacco flavors, from what I can recall off the top of my head, whereas Clausinii, which is the one that we used in Violet Bo- Bi- Burning Violet Beauregard, gives you more uh, stone fruit and fruity notes. Gotcha. So, like, Bruxellensis is definitely more funk than fruity. And I, I, I get that kind of little bit of um, funk light. Uh, for lack of a better, uh, lack of a better phrase, like it's funk light. Yeah, I would say. I mean, if you're average beer drinker, this is this is funk. Yeah. Like, I mean, this isn't burnt the burnt rubber like crazy shit that only you know true aficionados would 
even consider drinking. Like, I don't even dig that. But this has plenty of fun for me. I'm, I'm really into this. It's hard to describe the flavor because of the the, like the complexity that the, the, that the bread is bringing to it. It is a very complex beer. There are layers of flavor. Yeah. I like the, um, the, there's a little bit of the floralness and the aroma to it. And I think that's kind of what comes out in the taste as well. There's a little bit of that floral feel. Yeah. That, as you taste it. And I aroma, like that. The aroma I get a combination really white. of uh, the Belgian yeast with the mm -hmm. Amarillo hops. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a nice um, counterpoint to the uh, to the Belgian East. Yeah, there to have that Amarillo. I think it's really um, it create it creates a very floral kind of flavor to it. And talk about an interesting combination. I mean, when you're making a Belgian beer, I mean, I don't know about anybody else. The last thing I'm going to think about is adding Amarillo hops to it. Go, I love Amarillo hops. And I love Belgian. So I think that that sort of mashup is pretty spectacular yeah um it's really really delightful and in in the notes when they talked about you know coal miners wives that would serve this after a long day of work like that's the perfect time for this beer oh yeah come back from sweating my balls off working hard in the mine all day and like come out and come come out of the out of the mine and have this nice light refreshing beverage that has so many different flavors but is strong enough to probably cut through that layer of coal dust on my tongue, <laughs> you know, um, yes. is it's really delightful. And I also think that, um, again, going back to someone who maybe doesn't drink beer or, you know, drinks uh, maybe a wine drinker that, um, especially a white wine drinker, I think this would be something that would be interesting to them. Um, yeah, I think it has similarities, again, because of the, um, this was a Chardonnay barrel. This yeah, it was well, in a yeah. Chardonnay barrel, and I, I really get that in not the, not the Chardonnay flavor, no. but I feel like when you have a good, when some of the Chardonnays that I like a little more, kind of mirror the same flavor profile, and I think that's something that you could pass to someone who maybe does definitely like a Chardonnay. That hey, try this out. Let me see what you think about this. Yeah. This may be more approachable for sure, but the, like there, there definitely is a prominent funk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At like uh, aftertaste. Yeah. On this, that you know, the wine drinker might have a hard time getting past. Yeah, the fi the finish isn't going to be like they might when it's in their mouth. They might be like, oh yeah, this is this is kind of close. Then after they swallow, no, the, fin the like, finish is yeah, the finish is totally different. But um, I don't I this is. This is the type of beer that, you know, it's been like, you know, probably 15 episodes since I mentioned Monk's Cafe, but this is the type of beer that I, when I go there, I'm looking for. Because you don't right. see these very often, but they tend to congregate there. They tend to have a couple on tap, and I'm always asking, hey, which one of these are the funkiest? So, I'm, I'm way to funk. You know, <laughs> way to funk at. So, I'm, I'm really happy that uh, we were able to get something of this this quality. Yeah, this is really, I'm, I'm going to go back to delightful. Like, it's just the... That's the word that just comes to me when I taste this. That it's, it's, you know, it's more complex than nice. It's a little more sprightly. It's entertaining, and I really like the flavor on it. It's, it's great. I could ser seriously could see myself polishing off the whole 750, trying to identify all the different flavors. Right, with, without no, and then you'd finish it, and you'd be like, crap. I don't know everything that's in there. Let me get another one. I would finish it, and then I would wake up and see the smash glass in the floor and be really curious as to why I'm bleeding. That's probably what would happen. At 5.7. At 5.7. Oh, I, thought, I had thought you said 8.7. I'm sorry. 5.7 no, no. is not bad at all. At 5.7, uh, you're probably not going to be smashing bottles and passing no, out. But no. if you pound the whole, if you go through the whole thing quick, you might have a hard time opening up the second bottle. I'll give you that. <laughs> And so, Justin, before we started recording, you had asked me, like, you know, what exactly is, uh, what are they called? Is it Grzyski? A Grzyski. Grzyski. Oh, right, yes. Yeah, Grzyski is something else. I'm yes. confusing with. So, Grzyski is, uh, like, 5.7, I'm not entirely sure off the top of my head, but I feel like that might be towards the higher end of the ABV range, because uh, Grzyski is, like, the, uh, is a, the cousin of Cezanne. In that uh, many of the brewing practices are the same 
but the difference between the two styles is Grisette is meant to be drunk, fresh. Oh, whereas the, the Saison, Saison is sage. usually sat on for a while. Right. Which is why I was a little thrown off when you know Kevin read that it was aged for a month in the Chardonnay barrels because I feel like that would be atypical for the style. Yeah, I mean a month is a month in a barrel. It's though, not that long, long, but yeah. still, it's you know it's one of the styles that you know was intended to be drunk, drunk young. So, right. So like, sitting on it for a month just seems out of place, historically speaking, for the style. Right. I mean, I just I did a quick Google search, and apparently, like the uh, the top notes for a Rosetta that they're low ABV. This is so like around four percent. Yeah. So this is a little saying, little point yeah. seven is a little. It's a little, little high. high, and then also um, that the hop levels are noticeable, not that they're you know pronounced. But I actually, I can say that I think I'm pretty sure that I do get some some of the citrus notes, especially from the Amarillo. Like you oh, I know definitely the appreciate yeah. the hops and the aroma at the very least. Yeah, it. Um, um, th that that beer is is it really interesting? It's one of the most interesting um, beers that I've had in a while. In a, in a while. Yeah, I'm, I'm incredibly impressed. It's a beer that I would really like to sit down, and I, I, I'd like to just sit down and enjoy it and kind of contemplate it a little bit more. Definitely. Um, now, rating-wise, where does everybody sit? Rating-wise, I think I could probably go through two pints of it and feel pretty good about it, feel like I probably had a decent handle on it, and then probably want something different to mix it up a little bit. Um, not that, you know, not, not even to mix it up. Just, I feel like after two glasses, I'd probably be pretty satiated. Um, and it's, it's fairly refreshing too. Like, I don't really need to, like, I don't feel the need to, like, get water in me now. Like, oh man, I need to rehydrate. Like, it's pretty refreshing too. So I'm going to go with a bummer on it and feel pretty good about it. How about you, Mark? I'm going to stay at just a pint, just because it is very complex. And the, the lingering funk in my mouth, uh, I, I just would, would want something more lighter, refreshing, what have you, on my palate after the, the, the first class. I'm gonna I'm gonna go growler on it. Um, that's the type of beer that I I mean, it's pretty pretty close to a keg. That's the kind of beer I want to have all around. And again, it's kind of a little bit against our rating system that I want a growler because I don't know that I would drink it all like right mm -hmm. away. Yeah. But I know that I'm probably not going to stop until it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, like you said, I'm going to be like, hey, is there any more? Because I think there might be some more thoughts I have on this. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the growler on it. Well, I... I, I, I hope so your number me, two is at least as, is, is as good as the first Yeah, one. it makes me much more excited to open up the other two. I was a little worried, to be honest. Well, yeah. Um, just because I had never had anything from this brewery at all. So, I, honestly, I've never heard of it before, yeah. but... So the second start. one is going to be called The Bear and the Bees. And The Bear and the Bees is a honey ale that is in um, collaboration with Rob Keller of the Napa Valley Bee Company. Um, and he forged some honey from multiple wild hives around the Napa Valley and then let them use, had them use it for some of the beer. Um, it says they choose a clean and light base barley source malted in Madras, Oregon, with very low color, yet a distinct malt tonality from the variety Full Pint Barley. We use a relatively soft water from St. Helena and Hallertau hops from Yakima, Washington, as well as our French Saison yeast again, to create a beer that was dry and crisp on the finish. The honey was married with the beer at the end of the boil with specific timing and technique to retain and boost the impact of its aromatics. After primary fermentation and settling in stainless, we rack to a new French oak barrel, um, and aged briefly for settling in light oak aromatics. Its flavor profile is somewhere between a Chardonnay, dry mead, hot, hydromel style, and a Belgian strong ale. It's soft spiced with round honey tones and oak notes. Um, a focused and clean palate with very subtle hop bitterness. Our second release is crafted using vine, um, a different brand honey, uh, which is organic and been around for a while. Like, I'm just skimming through the notes here real, real quick as I'm reading through. So this one, kind of cool, has a bear that knocked over a uh, a, uh, a hive and is like trying to swap the bees away from his head on the picture. What's interesting to me is it says honey else. To me, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, oh, man. 
for those, yeah, before we opened the first one, the the uh, um, the first beer. The and other beast. Yeah, before the uh, we started recording, and I was pissed because the sound went up, went up, the bottle was amazing, and I'm so happy that the sound of the second one was yeah. equally as good, if not better. Yeah, I think it was better. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, when you see a honey ale, you, you kind of just think I'm going to get a sweet beer. Like that's at least what I think. So, so the, when the description of this one is so long, and there's so many things going on to it, that I'm genuinely hoping that the uh, um, the flavor that we get from it is going to be equally as um, complex. But we pour it out, and honestly, it looks um, pretty damn similar to the first one. Maybe a touch uh, darker. It's yeah, it's more towards the golden. Where the first one was definitely more straw. Agreed. Um, well, um, just real quick before we move on, I just wanted to note that um, on the lion and other beasts that came in at 22 IBUs, and I'm noticing on the back of the bottle that they have some more stats. And this one comes in at 18, uh, 19 IBUs. So um, <clears throat> color is light, is again really nice. Uh, aroma wise, it's very similar. You're getting a lot of the. They were made with the same yeast, so you're yeah, getting a lot so. of the same yeast characteristics. Um, the lacing on the glass is insane. Like, yeah. it's <laughs> hanging on there. I took a sip, and I, I know exactly where I put my mouth. Like, <laughs> yeah, and that probably has to do with the proteins contributed by the honey. Uh, that's a good point. Um, I get uh, on a sip, I, I do get sweetness, but again, I think that 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 um, uh, yeast comes through, and I, I'm wondering. I'm in particular wondering what Mark thinks because. I think this adds enough sweetness to it where the funk is um, a little less um, apparent. Well, I mean, the, the, this is completely absent of the the products. Right, right. I'm sorry. So the 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 front, but it still has the saison yeast in it. So yes, it yeah. definitely has yeah. a prominent saison yeast character. But uh, you know, it, it without the Brett in there, it does not have the lingering funk that kind of. A little too much for me, right? And, uh, the lion and other beasts. I like um, I'm, I'm, the honey is really sweet. It reminds me a lot of the golden ale, the Belgian strong ale that we tried recently. Um, from with, Barrage, from Barrage. Yeah. Like I'm getting a lot of that same kind of feeling of that, um, of that beer. Um, it's a little bit sweeter than the lion and other beasts, which makes sense. You have the honey in there to add that extra sweetness. But it, it's very, very, it's it's similar, but it, I think that they used the fresh oak barrel, didn't uh, change it up a little bit too. You know, they didn't use the Chardonnay barrel, they used the uh, fresh oak. Yeah. Um, kind of just smoothed it out a little bit. I don't think it really added a vanilla note. I'm not getting vanilla, but it's... No, uh, it was... French oak barrel, right? French oak, yeah. Yeah, French oak doesn't give you as strong vanilla okay. as an American oak does. Yeah, does that's it what have, I was trying does to remember. Um, per impart a different flavor? Or is it just a more subdued? I think it's just more subdued or subtle. Okay, because when um, I think of adding oak to, oak, putting it in oak, I think of, you know, yeah, adding you're, you're that, thinking that strong, strong vanilla. vanilla. Flavor. Yeah. Uh, but I think that, I don't believe that is uh, typical of French oak. Okay. The, yeah, the uh, I think my favorite part about this is the interplay between the saison yeast and the sweetness of the honey. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> um, no, I I think we're all just kind of contemplating. It's yeah, well, no, it's, this is definitely what I'm doing. I I had something and then uh, I got sidetracked and then I lost it and I was trying to find it again. I failed. <laughs> it, both both these first two really years. complex. Stuff. Yes, I I have to say that I'm in love with this brewery yeah. so far. It, I this is everything I love about beer. It's so hard for me to find beers that have this this level of complexity because a lot of times when you try to make a beer complex, all of, all the flavors fight together and it gets muddled and kind of weird. But it ends I mean, up tasting brown in a bad way. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, when I saw the, especially the, the, and thank you, Jack, for, for putting together notes for us. Because, yeah, that was yeah, really helpful. That was awesome. But the, the, I mean, a fat paragraph on this. You said you were skimming through it and pulling out the points. Yeah. It was, it was, a, it was a lot of information. They did a lot of shit to this beer. Oh, my God. Yeah. They really did do a lot to these beers, and it's really, 
what impresses me the most, I think, is the fact that they're so complex, yet so still remain light enough and really drinkable that you can, that if you're not paying attention, you can just drink these down and still enjoy it at a base, at a, at a simple level. And yet, if you want to take the time to enjoy it and analyze it, there's a lot to do there too, you know? And sometimes with, especially with darker beers, I feel like because you have the darker malt and the more robust characters, once it starts getting complicated, not, not complicated, complex, it can be a little harder to drink enough to work through all of it. Yes. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. This hey, one, this, to, this is light. Pump. You, you yeah. can drink through this and just be like, yeah, I'm just gonna let me get another bottle because I'm gonna keep working through this one. <laughs> you know. <laughs> what was the What was the ABV on this one? I forget. Um, this one came in at have it on the notes six point one. Six. Per, okay. No, it's not. It was not in my notes. So it was on the bottle. Yes. Yeah. So this one's gonna be. I could see drinking this beer. And I. I Maybe it's just the fact that it's Napa Valley, like, sticking in my head. But, like, I can see drinking these beers so far in a lot of the same way that you drink wines. Like, you get a bottle, and you pour it out for everybody, and you share it, and you talk about it, and which is what we're doing right now. Yeah. And, but you just keep doing and then But maybe you go, you know, we all kind of like that. Let's go get another bottle. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely feel like uh, Let's hang out and talk these and, beers are certainly built to play towards... Uh, you know, people that might be out there for a winery tour. I think so. And they're like, oh, hey, brewery, let's stop there. <laughs> yes. I I wouldn't doubt it. And if they didn't, if they didn't, it's kind of silly, <laughs> you know, but at the same point, it's still really impressive with what they're doing. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I'm not trying to discount like the quality or the complexity of the beers. I'm just saying that I feel like they're, they know who their clientele is that's going to be driving down the road. I'm like, oh, hey, why don't we stop there? So yeah. because I love me so much, you're telling me I belong in the movie sideways? Yes. <laughs> you can be Paul Giamatti. Fuck you, Paul Giamatti. I'm Paul Giamatti. I'm like the six foot four version of Paul Giamatti. <laughs> like, I don't get to be, I don't get to be the You're not Thomas Hayden Church. Oh, God damn it. That's who I want to be, though. <laughs> None of us are Thomas Hayden Church. No, no. I am. Look at me. I'm majestic. As fuck. <laughs> Look, so, I've seen him with a pretty impressive mustache at times, but I've never seen him with a neck beard. Yeah, you are you are pulling off the neck beard today. Like <laughs> it's only like I know you hedge trimmed it recently because it's not like super scruffy. <laughs> yeah, but but it is holy shit! It's 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 alive. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. Uh, I did have to. I had a interview that I had to trim down for a little bit. Okay. Um, but yeah, now it's back with a vengeance because they called me back and they said, oh yeah, we uh, we decided to go a different direction. So So you're like, all right, cool. <laughs> I'm going <with> full Zoidberg. <laughs> I like to, uh, after watching it recently, I like to think more of the Dilophosaurus from uh, Jurassic Park. Oh. <laughs> nice. It pops outside, sometimes I spit. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, all right, rating wise, where are we going? With rating this? wise, this is, this is another one. difficult one to rate. This is another one. I think it's going to fall in the same category. Um, it's going to be a bomber for me, but this one is not quite as strong as a bomber. Um, mostly because I think because honey sweetness tends to get to me a little bit. Um, I just I just can't. It's not a type of sweetness that I really enjoy and I want to keep going going back to over and over. But I think a bomber is going to be right on point. I agree with the bomber. Um, it doesn't have the same complexity as the previous one with the Brett, um, but I still really enjoy it. It's close. It's close to a growler, but I'm gonna stick to a bomber. I don't really perceive it as all that sweet, but that being said, uh, it, it's definitely a bomber for me. I could enjoy two glasses of it without it becoming too overpowering for my palate before I need somebody else. Thank you. That makes sense. What is what is this last uh, last thing? That I'm sorry that it's the last one. I wish we had like six more bottles to go through. The so last one is the Ring Dove and the Hunter. <laughs> I fucking love these names too, which only adds to the fact that they're in which Napa is Valley. Six point eight percent ABV. Right. So the Ring Dove and the Hunter is a is as the the brewer writes is a beer that I've been brewing for decades. Once called People's Porter. Oh, pardon me. It has always been a robust style porter and has inevitably changed throughout the years. 20 plus. Wow. 
This rendition is framed by the malty, rich, and biscuity full pint malted barley, black patent malt, a pinch of coffee malt, and hints of caramel 100 to 120. We hopped with U.S. grown Goldings hops, which were hit hard and, and during setting. You know, blah 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 blah. It doesn't. He's talking about the hop, the hop conditions that they were grown under. We don't care. We aged the beer in red and white wine barrels for three weeks prior to bottling. A spicy herbal note balanced with subtle roast malts and a mild bitterness brings this beer alive and should age gracefully in your cellar at 6.8 to 7.3 percent AB alcohol by volume. Whoa. Um, this yeah. is a beautiful beer. It's, uh, you know, I can't even joke and say it's light black. It's, uh, it's midnight black. No, it's not that dark. It is pretty fucking dark, man. Yeah, but it's definitely brown. It's not black. If I, if I hold it up directly to the light, I can, I, I can see brown. But if I hold it here, like in normal light, I mean, I can't identify the color. There's almost an absence of color to me. We need a tiebreaker, Kevin. Um, I'm going with dark brown. Okay, I, I lose. I'm okay with losing. Who's the Sarah Cod beer server here, huh? Oh, my God, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'm going to a mushroom stamp right on the forehead and pull that shit out again. Um, anyway, the... <laughs> I'm sorry, that was really funny. I appreciate that. Thank you. There is a... I don't know. I want to make sure that it's not me putting it into the beer, putting it into the aroma, but... Are you guys starting to get a certain aroma similarity between the three beers um, that I think kind of speaks to the barrel, the wine barrel kind of thing that they're putting in there? Yes. A consistency between the three be the beers and the aroma. Yeah, a little bit. They Each one of them, this one, least of them, uh, which makes sense, has a slightly, uh, I don't know if fruity is the right word, but just, I think, yeah, 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 that's exactly it. A little bit of a note to it. This one has the least of all of them. They kind of went from most down to, to least in that order. Um, the, the the head is pretty awesome on this. Yeah, it's a it's a nice uh, tan head on top of it. Um, yeah, let me take a sip. Oh man, yeah. The did you say this was in a, in a barrel too? Red, red and white. Yes. Yeah, you definitely get the barrel character. In the beer, but not in the same way you would with a, a Russian Imperial Stout, right? Where you know you're getting both the, the alcohol note mm -hmm. from it. It's I mean clearly not a, a, a bourbon or a whiskey barrel. No, no, yeah, that it's definitely a, a different beast in that respect. But it's a uh, it's much more rounded than I would expect from a porter. Yeah, I think that comes from the. Um... The fact that they age it in multiple barrels, I'm not sure if that means that they blend it. Or I'm, they... I'm assuming that's what it is. It's yeah. a blend of the beer that was aged. You know, a portion of it was aged in white wine. Right. And a portion was aged in red wine. Yeah, so assuming that, assuming that's the method that they used, I think that's going to create that kind of depth and roundness to the flavor that they're that they're going for. Um, yeah, like if, if somebody handed me a class of this and then asked me to declare the style, Absolutely no way, I would say, Porter. On the opposite. I mean, okay, so before I say that, what, I mean, where would you go? I don't. I really okay. I don't know. Yeah. But I would not. I would not immediately think Porter. Like now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, I might think like English Porter. That's that's where my mind goes because I'm not getting a um, a lot of roast out of it, which obviously potentially the barrels can take out the roast, but. I don't know how to take it out, but subdue it. But it, I would go porter on it because it makes the most sense from uh, the lack of roast and also the uh, um, the uh, sorry, just the overall flavor is not as harsh as as, as most stouts. You know what I mean? The, the, no, I, the, I definitely wouldn't think stout, but I I honestly, you know what I may, might, maybe English brown. I might think Bach, honestly. Oh. That's actually, you know what? I never think about the dark lagers at all, so that's, yeah, that's not bad. Are we talking Eisbach? No, no, no. That's just Doppelbach or Bach. Eisbach, or a double. so as a random aside, Eisbach is... Not Eis, E-I-S. Yeah, Eisbach. Yeah, that's, how yeah, it, it, that's ice in German. Okay. And 
So what that is is it's they take a Bach beer, freeze it, yeah, and then no, skim the ice out of it. Yeah, I knew that. Uh, I, but, I, I actually right. didn't know that. I'm sorry. I don't no, mean to, just, I didn't I didn't mean to shoot you down on that. Just a, just a straight up Bach. Right. Which I'm not sure what category number that is. Yeah, the uh, actually what was interesting to me is when I was um I was reading, judging a, judging a competition recently. We were talking about um you know whether something was a, a porter or a stout, and it was you know even in, amongst and I'm me the, the least experienced out of everyone by a large margin. You know there was different opinions amongst all the judges on how to identify a dark beer as a particular style. So you know I was only really thinking about those two. But when you throw in the idea that you can have the dark lagers. And, other, and you know several other dark styles. I, I kind of see where you're coming from. Yeah, like they, this could be a dunkel spot to me. Right. Yeah, so, that's really true. The the yeah, it, it definitely could be, especially with the the mouthfeel. Um, the idea that it's not as yeah, uh, and there's heavy. there's no there's really no perceptible hops. Hmm. Right. It's a very clean uh, drinking. Yeah. Beer. So flipping back through the form of knowledge here. The um, Dunkelsbach is um, a, a dark, strong, multi German lager beer that emphasizes the multi, the multi rich and somewhat toasty qualities of continental malts without being sweet in the finish. Hmm. Um, yeah, I wouldn't call this sweet in the finish. It's not dry either. It's basically medium. Yeah. No, it's it's definitely an interesting beer. I think I might call into that without knowing the book. Without knowing this, the variety of styles as well as you guys do, I would probably go to Porter just to saying that it's dark and I'm not a stout, so I'm gonna go up one tier to Porter. That's where my mind. So is like in, in like the most elementary school way of like logical thinking of it, that's where I would go. Um, but that being said, it's it's interesting. It does have a very. I, I, I like the idea of round. As the flavor, I think you summed that up well with that mark. Yeah. Um, but it's a little bit. It's the sweetness is there. I'm gonna go back to it because I was from their book. I haven't had a sip in a few minutes, so. I drank all of it. Yeah, I, I did too. Which well, there's, there's plenty more. I it. Yeah. There is a. I don't. I don't know that I'm. I'm gonna make it out of here without drinking more of all three of these. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of you guys, but as I finished this one, I got a little bit of that kind of acidity sourness that sometimes comes with like red wine i think there's a little just, bit yeah, just the, the the lightest hint of it but yeah. again it's not anything terribly strong it's definitely not acidic um I, i'm just talking the most no mild, yeah, yeah the mo right at the very end of the sip kind of on the side of the tongue i get a very little bit of it but no i'm just i'm just trying to clarify that uh it's not uh it's not an off flavor from uh, poor sanitation or anything. Oh, no, no, I realize that. Um, like I said, I'm just getting a little tiny bit of that um, at the end, which takes away a little bit to me. But um, it's still kind of interesting. I think for me, I think this one is going to fall, and I think this is going to be a trifecta for me of bombers. Um, these beers overall, you know, this one and the other two, Together, there, there's too much going on to only have one, but there's also so much going on that I feel like I would become a little overwhelmed if I tried to go beyond the uh, the two of them. That's fair. I mean, for me on on the Ring Dove and the Hunter, I'm I'm gonna go Rowan on it because yeah. I I really enjoy it. You know, it doesn't scream Porter to me, but I definitely drink my way through. You know, four or five glasses of it. Yeah, I'm not getting fatigued. I, I had a feeling you were going to go growler. I'm going to do the same thing. I, uh, I, that's another uh, a really awesome beer. One of the interesting things that I saw uh, on here was that these illustrations are apparently by someone named Francis Barlow, circa 1687. Oh okay. yeah, that makes sense. It so definitely seems like uh, yeah, they they seem like it's like like old timey encyclopedic yeah uh, illustrations. They're really cool and um. Apparently, there's a website, NapaValleyBeer.com. Napa oh, no, sorry. That's Napa Valley B. I put a letter in there because I like beer. But uh, the Honey Ale has one where someone apparently from NapaValleyBeeCompany.com uh, like had, given, had given them a, uh, a review on the back of the bottle, which is pretty cool. Um, 
They have the OGs back here. I mean, this is like beer geek heaven. These beers. Able to sit here and you can talk about these things like like complete losers for just hours. I feel like a, a, this, I feel one of them. this one <laughs> this one was fourteen and a half degrees play out. This one was twelve and a half. Um yeah, uh if I didn't say it already, this one's a growler. You did say that. Okay. So And Mark, you went with a growler as well? Yes. yes. Yeah. Um I gotta say that this one, Jack, was an absolutely awesome find. Yes. Um, thank I, you so much. And this is the kind of, to be this, honest. This is the polar opposite of when he went to the Alchemist and brought us back beer. Right. Both, we appreciated both of them, but this one we really liked. <laughs> these are the kind of beers that, like, like, why I got into doing this with you guys. Like, why, I, these are the kind of beers that I wanted to drink and have an excuse to drink these beers. Like, I can't drink, I can't justify buying this whole bottle for myself. I would honestly, I would probably buy this beer just for the bottle. Yeah, but like, if I bought this beer and tasted it, I would probably buy like six of each. Yeah, but like this, <laughs> I is would the, be broke. But having, the, but being able to to try these beers and share these beers and talk about these beers, this is why I, I this is why I do these. Like, yeah. this is why I, I love doing the show, and but and these were fantastic. They were really great fun. So thank you, Jack, so very very much. Yes, I, I appreciate it, Jack. Uh, I'm pretty sure Jack would like to stay, thank uh, Stefan, the person who helped him and his friends when he went out there to buy these. Apparently the he gave them tastings of nine different beers, including two of which that weren't even on the board. Nice uh, job, Stefan. So, uh, yeah, he, uh, see you. you know, it was, uh, it was really cool. I always appreciate it when um, anybody, in particular Jack, that's already done it three times, um, yes. you know, thinks about us and, 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 and buy, not only tells us about what beer that, that they want us to drink, but then well, procures them for us. Reaches yeah. out to us in advance of the trip and says, hey, I'm headed out to blank, you know, you know. <laughs> Any places that I should stop by. Right, exactly. So, um, well, I appreciate it a lot. And I'm going to, uh, as soon as we, we're done recording, I'm going to drink some more. There you go. Sounds good to me. Well, guys, Mark, do you have any other uh, final thoughts on uh, Mad Fritz Brewing beers? No, other than that, if I ever, you know, find myself out in that area, I'm going to be sure to stop by. Absolutely. All right, then, everybody. Well, take care of yourselves. And each other. Cheers. Cheers for listening. If you enjoyed Beertastic Voyage, please be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and don't forget to review and rate us. The guys can be found online at www.beertasticvoyage.com, on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash Beertastic Voyage, and Twitter and Instagram at Beertastic Show, or send them a good old fashioned email at beertasticvoyage at gmail.com. Thanks for listening and cheers for local beers. Aside from the fact that he committed a felony. Oh, he sent it through, he sent the USPS. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a problem. We have to tell him not to do that. Yeah. We, we spoke about it. that on the podcast. Oh, we did. I don't, yeah. I don't remember. I don't. <laughs> Holy shit. I feel like I wish we got that on recording. Fuck. Oh. Hopefully the next ones are just like that. Yeah. That was a good one. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, I would have uh, definitely broken the paper before popping up. <laughs> well, Listen. Well, we, we, in retrospect, yeah. I definitely would have. I definitely would have pulled out before this happened. <laughs> <laughs> See, now these are the things we need recording. <laughs> yeah, I just that's one thing I don't need my voice saying on the internet. <laughs> definitely would have pulled out before that happened. <laughs>